In the spring of 1985, a very select group of Winston Cup drivers are going to get the chance to go racing for $500,000 in the Winston, the race for NASCAR winners. This race would run Saturday afternoon before the 600 on Sunday. And uh, you can see it's the best of the best. It was a pretty amazing lineup, really, of superstars of the, NASCAR, of the sport at the time. What an ugly hat, I know that. In 85, Elliott had this incredibly fast Thunderbird that, that none of us could keep up with, and Bill was winning everything. But we were always right there, second, third, second, third. Here's the guy right here, the mastermind, uh, Junior Johnson, uh, one of the most creative, probably one of the smartest men I ever, ever drove for. Junior was always a step ahead of everybody else. I laugh when people say, can you imagine if Junior Johnson had the technology that these teams have today and I always say, how do you know he didn't? It was so important to Junior to win this race because it was the first all-star race and Junior Johnson wanted to be the first one to win it. That's the car, we take it to the wind tunnel. It's a twisted sister. We've done everything to it you can imagine to get the most downforce, to make it the best car we possibly could. And Junior ground a set of rods to make them as light as you possibly could and only run as long as he thought they should be able to run. That was the gamble you took. Build something that you knew you could win with with a chance that something could happen to it before that race ended. In this case, it was just a hand grenade that was built for that race. Well, the guy that wins this race today is obviously going to make a lot of money, and uh, this is one of the most important races we'll run this year. You see here, 200000 to win. It's the most money ever won in one race. Nobody wants to run second in this race. Terry Labonte beat us for the pole. We started outside pole. We had a great car, took the lead early, and uh, was able to hold Terry off, but I got loose. Uh, as the race went on here and the tires heated up, car changed a little bit, and the car got pretty loose, and uh, Terry was able to get around us. I was worried about Terry Labonte to start with because Terry was better than us, and I was worried about Harry at the end. Harry ran great at Charlotte, always was a car to beat over there. He liked to run the high line most of the time, and, uh, and he was a tough competitor and so much fun to race with. Harry and Travis Carter, they would pitted first. They were the first car on pit road. They got their tires, and they got out, and they were long gone. When we pitted, uh, Harry was a straightaway ahead of me. He was going into three when I was coming off at two. What well, Junior decided that we would be better off to pit at the very last instead of the very beginning of that when the window opened. <laughs> Junebug just now spoiled her up. <laughs> I was loose. On the pit stop, Junior got back to the sledgehammer and he just stood that spoiler up to about 70 degrees. This is really what helped me. Had the spoiler laid down quite a bit, made the car fast, but it made it loose. And so Hammond and the boys, they get in here and they get me some tires on this baby. We didn't put any fuel in it, just tire, put tires on the way we went. We got back out and I'll never forget Junior coming on the radio and said, Daryl, you want to win $200,000 or you want to win 75? And I said, I want to win 200, Junior. And he said, well, you better get up on the wheel, boy, and catch that 33 car. I pulled those gloves up on my elbows and tightened those belts up as tight as I could, and I got after that thing. Darrell Waltrip is running him down. He's cut him down by a tenth of a stone this time by. Get on down in there. Turn one for the final time. Waltrip cuts to the outside. Gant is on the bottom of the racetrack. It will be a drag race down the back straightaway. Drag race up to back, I got this. And I caught Harry, and uh, this is coming to the white flag. Waltrip jumped into turn number three with the lead. Has Harry Gant got anything left? You can just see how much better I was there getting in the corner. Harry's tires to give up. My car was just now coming in its own. Better get back, Harry. Something bad getting ready to happen. Darrell's going to come across the line here winning. Darrell Waltrip, a hand in the air, a wave to the crowd of 100,000 plus. He wins $200,000 oh, and he blows up. What a Hollywood ending. <laughs> Junior Johnson and his crew built Waltrip a 105 lap hand grenade. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Everybody said Junior had the pin. There's such a controversy around that race and what happened. If he had anything to do with that engine blowing up other than building it and knowing it wasn't going to last too long, it's unbeknownst to me. And you see here, I'm waving. I'm a happy camper. I just won the race. And I crossed the finish line and I'm waving to the fans and I'm elated and boom, she blows all the pieces. It just proves one thing, 
It's better to be lucky than good. We're here with the winner of the first Winston, Daryl Waltrip, and is he ever excited? Oh, God, I can't believe it. The motor blew right when I took the checker. It blew all to pieces. And you can see here we get the car in victory circle, and uh, it's quite a celebration. You see Stevie there behind me. Anybody will tell you, there's no greater feeling as a race car driver than to go home with champagne, sticky champagne all over you, confetti stuck to you, holding that trophy, in this case, the biggest check I'd ever won in my career. That win, that day, I think it ignited all of us like a way we'd never been before. We saw that if we get the car right, we get the engine right, we can outrun that nine car. It really propelled us to the championship that year.